Hi, Michael Fox here. Today I am visiting the pollinator link garden of Bernadette and Len Crook. Bernadette and Len's garden is part of the Kedron Brook link and provides water, food and shelter for wildlife moving through that urban habitat. It's been cool down. That's, that's my favourite area right down the back because it's, um, it's dappled shade most of the day. Mm -hmm. and it's, well, there's a turkey down there at the moment, down in, in the garden down there. Yeah. Oh, there's one lorikeet up there. It's very quiet, having a nice little quiet feed. Oh, there they are, there's two. From the outside. She's being very quiet. So this is? A Malacopa lorianna, it's called. No lorikeets there at the moment. Sometimes they have a battle royal up there. So loud. So the lorikeets love it? Lorikeets love it. Oh, yeah. lorikeets love it. We've seen quite a few butterflies around at the moment. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot about different names of butterflies. Well, that's, it's, yeah, this is a good way to start learning, isn't yes, it? Yeah. This tree over here, the lemon scented myrtle, oh, a week ago was covered in bees. It, just, it was. It's just it was getting lovely. to the end of its flowering now. It's been a beautiful the lemon scented myrtle. So it would smell good? Oh yes, even now, you, sometimes you still get that waft of the, the lemon, lemony caramel smell. So, so this is... Um, Diplodenia, I think it's called. Yeah. It's not, it's not a native plant, I know that. Someone gave it to us. Um, so the common crow liked that one. Oh look, there's a chrysalis back there. The golden chrysalis. My goodness, we missed that one. We did. So look at that, isn't that special? Yeah. And when you get the grandkids can come yes. and see something like yes. that. Oh yeah. yeah. We've got the midgen berry here. Lily and pillies. lily pillies. Yeah. So you're feeding people as well as yes. wildlife? Yes. Hopefully we'll get some little berries for the kids because they love um, they like having a little taste of the lily pillies when they go down the back when they come up. So it's a bit rough down here, so we're doing work down here, so Gardens are always a bit of a work in progress, oh. aren't they? Well, we've had paving done, but we haven't quite finished tidying <laughs> it all up. And this poor little bottle brush has definitely got a lean on it. So has that wattle. Look at the wattle. Yeah. I don't know what to do about that. The, um, oh, I'd say that's reaching the end of its life. Oh, yeah. Basically. But again, here, the um, seed-eating birds. Yes, yes. We've had, uh, we did have the grey, pink and grey galahs. Yeah, yeah. One day, there were quite a few of them, one morning, uh, when, when um, probably several weeks ago now, with a turkey down the back there on the seat, on the back of the seat. Oh. That's the female. We've also had a little... There she is. So she's got a, her life well sorted out there. <laughs> He's quite comfortable, those two, isn't he? They come through every day. Yeah. It's a solitary beehive that's made out of seed around the outside bamboo inside the various side uh, bees. And something's been up the top row, third from the right, something using that one? That, that, that could be that one probably in use, yeah. Yeah. Something. So some of the others look like they're in use as well? Yeah, they actually do things in between the, the tubes as well, they don't actually use the whole sometimes oh, okay. in between, so there's quite a lot of that there, but like that one there is being used. They are all hollowed out, so they are being insects have been uh, using them. Same with that one there. Okay. So. Oh, but that, it, that's just quietly over here, so they can and see. And it looks attractive. Yeah, I can show you pictures of bigger ones. <laughs> I've really got on my phone here. <laughs> so. Yes, yeah, so I hope it's doing its job. But and is it? It's not hard to make something like that. Oh, I could probably make that up in a day or so, give yeah. all the material and put it together, but. The main thing is packing it in so that things don't fall out like in the storms and that, but that's where these pieces of wood actually take up some of the space, otherwise you can put tubes and tubes and tubes in there. Yeah. But I buy these as actually garden edges here, yeah, a roll of bamboo that long and yeah. a wire about and then you roll them up. Yeah. And you put them around your garden, I take yeah. the wire out and just jam them, they're already cut the size. Yeah. Good idea. The cedar is light and it, lets, it wears well in the weather and it lets yeah. the, the, the timber breathe a bit yeah. rather than hardwood or something like that. So something something like that becomes an attractive part of the garden. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's hidden away here, but it's sort of weathering now. When I first put out all the, all the bamboo, started standing out red and white and all the colours and stuff. Yeah. But it's it blends in well now, and hopefully the insects feel secure there. Yeah. 
and it should be facing north south but I, I put it there i had it down the back but the turkeys kept knocking it down so <laughs> it's up here out their road <laughs> very calm turkey she's pretty good this one she's uh never rushes too much i was in here pruning yesterday everything got a bit cut on but um And so you've got a bed bath here and you've got um, a couple of rocks in it. That's just, an answer. Creatures get stuck in, they can sometimes. climb out. Hopefully it'll just be a little bank that they can um, get to. I yep. do sometimes have to rescue little insects out of these things if I see them. But hopefully, um, just don't... Oh, there goes a common crow. Um, yeah, so hopefully if they could, they could get out of the water and onto the bank if they had to. Mm. And then mm. get out of the water. Little caterpillar here, where that little fella is. He's a bit lost. Oh, that's a sawfly. Ah. No, it's all different. Yep. So, something I'll eat that. We, we actually had a couple of kookaburras very interested in that um, ant nest up there. We thought they were going to, they were there for about three or four days. Yeah. Poking at it and digging at it, and we thought that they might be going to nest there, but eventually they just left. Yeah. It's a very busy tree here. It's a lot of, it takes a lot of passing traffic. There are birds flying in and out all the time of the oak. So maybe they thought it was too busy for a nest. I don't know. And you've got another huge bird bath over here. Yes. This is a good one for the bigger birds. Um, so it's a nice shallow slope. Yes. They like to slide in there and they They do. The lorikeets in particular. They like to get in and have a good splash around and then they come up to the side and then they slide back in. It's a very <laughs> Good play one, a good play bird bath this one. They're very playful. Um, the mother crow has taught the baby crow how to have a bath. <laughs> it's splashing water everywhere. <laughs> They're hilarious. Um, yes, so we've had, we get all the birds down in this one, the noisy miners, the blue-faced honey eaters. The blue-faced honey eater will often go to the top bird bath, have a splash there and then come down to this one for another one. I don't know <laughs> what the motivation is. Might be different temperatures. That one's probably a warmer one out in the sun. Oh, okay. It's so it likes cooler. a bit of a sauna and then a... <laughs> <Exactly>. then a... <laughs> Possibly. But you find the, um, you can get the, the, the noisy miners will fly from bird bath to bird bath hoping to chase anyone who's having a bath away. <laughs> oh, yeah. But... <laughs> they don't, we've had, in those really big drought years back in 2008, one day I came out, I was about to come out into the yard from under the house, and but I stopped, fortunately, and saw right around the bird bath there were, would have been eight or nine lorikeets sitting around there just, and they're all just waiting. One was in the water, the others were all waiting for their bath. They all, but they just sat there waiting. There were so many of them, it was just, I wish I'd had a camera. It was a wonderful sight. Um, yeah, so, but they don't seem to fight over the bird baths, the birds really, usually. No, they all know. They fight over it. the tree, the, the yeah. flowers, yep. but they don't seem to fight over water. I think they it's just know ground, it's I always think, there for them. So. No, but it's kind of just providing a bit of R and R for the plants. They when they need a bit of R and R, they come out here. So, but we do turkeys. Um, we've managed the turkeys pretty well with pots pushed into places, and also with sometimes we've had some wire guards put over things that mm -hmm. we really need to protect. But if they're pretty thickly planted, I don't find the turkeys do too much damage at the moment. Um, it's it's when they've got lots of room to get in and, and yeah. do the damage that they're the worst. We did plant the, um, the vine for the Richmond bird wing butterfly but I've never really seen any interest shown in it and we've had a bit of a prune back here we've had to cut Oh, there. but it's in flower at the moment? Yes, yes. Well, not quite open yet. Oh no, there's one that's open. Yeah. See. We won't be able to see a single bee here. We've got the Melaleucas here and um... So the yellow flowering um, flower or something yeah it's a native native one that's yeah. a native one yep um they're quite we, quite beautiful in themselves uh, oh that's a native geranium, geranium. Yeah, yep. that little, we have got lots of little natives around and the little straw flowers are actually self um, i think that might be a baby one these are all self-sown from the seeds of these have all fallen down so they've all just self-sown yeah. So we, we do have some very beautiful oh, native plants. We had a pretty pink one, but they're probably at the end now. 
it's just... Well, they last forever, though. They do, yeah, just about finished. Anyway. And the insects like those? They, um... Bees, I mean. Yes, I should think some sort of bees. Mm. Um, and you've got some Dianella in the back there? Lots of Dianella. We have Dianella. There's a Lamandra back there. We have, we have lots of Dianella around the place. Over here we've got our little Callistamins. It's a... So the one's flowering up here, just a little flower there. Got little Melaleucas, Grevillea. Got the little um, purple ground cover, that's a native, I just can't think what it's called. Uh, yes, I know the one. No. Uh, fan flower. That's it's it. A common yes. name. Yeah. And uh, the little that native violet. Yep. The yellow banks here. And this is a little native. Not flowering Love flower. at the moment. Love flowers. Love Shooting flower. engine variables. That's it. And I've got them in with And the, the native, native violet, violet, violet in there flower. as well. We've got the cat's whiskers there. Now the love flower mm. supports five butterfly species. Does it? Oh wow! It's, it's actually propping up in the good, paving. Good bang, good bang for your buck, the love yes, flower. it's a great one. Thank you, Len, Bernadette, for sharing your amazing garden and its wildlife. If you have been inspired by Bernadette and Led's garden, please visit www.pollinatorlink.org to register your garden and help us reach our 2018 target of 1,000 registered Pollinator Link gardens. The Pollinator Link project is a non-profit social enterprise sponsored by the B4C Environment Fund and supported by Brisbane City Council. The objective is to create a city-wide mosaic habitat for birds, butterflies and bees by providing water food and shelter in backyards, balcony gardens, schoolyards and parks. Please register today and join the Pollinator Link community bringing wildlife back to city gardens.